the sizzle on WGVE 88.7 FM. I'd love to get your take on, on the quarterback. This is year three for Justin, and and he has not been dealt a good hand. There's no question. And we've nope. gone over certain things. Yep. But at the end of the day, good quarterbacks have a tendency of cleaning up others' others' mistakes. And that may be yep. fair or unfair. And and just yep. from my seat, what leaves me most unsettled is I haven't seen enough of that through through year three. And with what they have ahead of them in, in terms of the capital, yep. it's just have we come to a conclusion as to what direction they're going, or is that decision still to be made, in your opinion? Yeah, I have a feeling that it's, it's heading down the path of it all may be reset. Okay? It, may be, it all may be reset. And I, and I don't know. Look, I don't like speculating on people on people's jobs, or especially, especially without having intimate knowledge and being inside the building. And, but I know that's what we're, we're paid to do. We're paid to kind of make educated, you know, uh, and, you know, form educated opinions about what's happening here. But, I, but I'll tell you this, like, all right, so when Bedgett comes in the game, right, I see the offense, like, if you see how quickly he gets through what he wants to do in the process happens, like, it's just like, I'm at, this ball's out of here. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not messing around here. You're listening to The Sizzle with DJ J and G Sizzle. You're listening to a Sizzle exclusive. You know who it is. You know what it is. It's the Sizzle in the building. This is the hotness. This is the fire. Jay, it is badget time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's badget time. Uh, somebody called in one time. And they called him Tyson Baguette. I sort of like that because he's like a crusty french loaf of bread well he might be a baguette but he might be like a hidden jewel something that the bears have been hiding and keeping behind wraps for just this moment when they knew they had to unleash the real offense that they've been pl- trying to play for the whole season now you know my other nickname i have many of them many of them some of them we can't say on the air right now but one of them is nostra thomas yes it is and me say Early, it, it is it is recorded. Me say early this season that the Bears' starting quarterback was not the one that was playing right now. He was sitting on their bench. Mm-hmm. Well, at this point, the reality is right now Justin Fields is out with a hand injury, small tissue injury, but there is no time frame. There are no torn muscles or torn ligaments at the moment. But right now, we do know he is week to week. He cannot throw because he can't grip the ball in his throwing hand, which could be a problem. Now, these non-specific injury injuries, I mean, we know that injury was real. Mm-hmm. But I think this is a real wait-and-see moment right here. Well, this is this is the biggest wait-and-see moment. And one of the things we're not going to do, because I know it's been talked about all week, we're not going to pontificate on who, if Justin's great, if he's bad, if he's terrible. What we're going to talk about is what is going to be the game plan. This is going to be our segment. We're going to talk about the game plan for the Bears. What are they actually going to do to help Tyson Badgett? And then we'll talk about, we'll get into what's going on with Justin and where we think this whole thing is going and where this train is going to get off. But, Jay, let's start right now with Tyson what do you see as the future of this game that's coming up? Because this game is going to be important for a couple of reasons. This game is going to give you some indication as to not only what the Bears are going to do, but how they're going to plan for everything moving forward. Because they have some assets and they have some they have the ability to make some moves and do some some interesting things. So are they going to go forward? and trade for a pass rusher. They're going to try and get a a receiver. There's so much that we can talk about. But right now, we've got one game coming up. You've got the Chicago Bears at noon going up against the L.A. Raiders. Well, I'm sorry. I keep saying L.A., the Las Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas. Las Vegas, baby. So the Vegas babies are going to be doing their thing But here's one of the things, as an added bonus, they will be without their starting quarterback. Jimmy G? The region's own Jimmy G. 
Yeah. The man that makes you want to go and get a subway. It does, and that's one of the most beautiful men out there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's the right the bad part. Is it's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. He's such like, a beautiful man, right there. He's right? a better. I, I was like, wow. He's like Jesse Palmer. He's one of those ones you think of him more as a he. What he'll do in after football, yeah, than what you he do, does for football. It, it all he has to do is just show up and smile, and he's gonna sell whatever he's gonna sell. You know, and, and and Jimmy G, because he was under the tutelage of Tom Brady for such a long period of time, he is going to be more than just a average quarterback in the league. I think as long as Jimmy G can stay healthy, which he can't do right now because of his got back injuries going on, that Jimmy G is a quarterback that can lead you somewhere. You know, is he going to win a championship for you? Don't know. But I think he can keep you competitive in the right system. Mm-hmm. No, they got Brian Hoyer. They think rolling. I didn't even know Brian Hoyer was still playing. Yes, football. Former Bear. Former. You know, he was old then. <laughs> <laughs> he is old. He's old everywhere. Yeah, he. I mean, he, he had no. You know, you know, he had no hair going on, and he's. He didn't even start getting that old man walk. You yeah. know, he yeah. had that little shuffle going on with the one you trying not to fall down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. But uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. This is a okay. I know we're going to talk about. I have some ideas on what the Bears should do um, with Tyson. But the one thing that they need to do, number one, play anybody at left tackle, but Larry Bourne. He is a turnstile, an absolute turnstile. The revolving door. It just spins and spins and just spins around. Come on in. Hi, how you doing? Come on in. Look, this guy, I understand NFL line play, mm-hmm. right? I've been around a number of guys who played in the league and many things. And one of the first things for left tackles is that you have to have good feet. Mm-hmm. Maybe great feet is a left tackle. Maybe great feet. Usually good feet guys. Like I was a good feet guy, and I played right tackle. Left tackles have to be almost a dancing bear over there. You got to be 320 pounds and can get down with the get down. You know what I'm saying? You need to be out there with John Travolta on Saturday Night Fever, you know, in your tight white suit and getting into the Bee Gees. Mm -hmm. This guy just falls to his knees. I've never seen anything like this. He goes to kick back and he just fall over. Me fall down. He 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 looks like you know, remember the remember that 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 uh the lady falls down and she couldn't get up and they had you need to give him one. What's that thing called? You wear around your neck? It's the the emergency the button. It's the the not the hurricane. The cane is the cane. He he need, he, he needs to get that button. You got to push every time you fall down. If he did that, the battery would not make it through the first quarter. I have yet to okay. see. Anybody lose their feet like this. I mean, literally, slide, slide, fall. That's not how it's supposed to be. It's slide, 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 kick. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's supposed to be. Not fall down. Me fall down. Help me. I can't get up. Look, if <laughs> I don't care who they play over there, you, you're not going to play white here at center anymore. That's the, number, the second number thing I was going to say. Then I'm going to get to Badger. Okay. All right. So let me get to the center situation. A lot of this offense that the Bears are trying to run are a run solution offense, which is I'm going to look and see what's in the box. And the box is from tackle to tackle and what's sitting right outside. Is somebody pressing close to the line? Mm -hmm. Has a strong safety walked up? Has has a corner cheated down? Something like that. Do we have eight in the box? And that's what we're talking about. So now we're going to count in our head how many people that we have, and then we're going to look to the outside and we can run these stick routes against this run solution where you go, okay, if the box is open where they bail out, I'm going to hand this football. That's why you see where the guys are doing all this this college run action where you stick the ball in their belly and they look like they're running the option back with, you know, 19, what was that, 1975, 76 with, you know, mm-hmm. Billy Sims and everybody, Oklahoma. What's that? Hey, Jarvis Wetrine and Nebraska. I used to love that. But so now you see these guys running. These, these are, this is not an RPO anymore. This is a run solution. The difference between a run solution is that we're going to look and see, are they going to try to stop the run first? If they are, we're going to go ahead and snap the ball out and throw these quick passes. These are the things that you're going to see. 
you're going to see a lot of that today, but I think what's going to happen, Vegas also knows that they want to throw these routes out into the flat. Not into the flat, it's just outside the hash marks, between the hash marker and the numbers. That's where the flat is, right outside there. Badger, they want the, the, the Bear want Badger to throw the ball into these areas because these are your normal areas that you throw in a run solution. We know that Las Vegas has seen this film on him, and they're going to show him this press defense where they're coming down the box, and I think they're going to come down and try to jump these throws out into the flat. What we need now is some sluggos. We need a pump, a hitch, that we're going to throw that ball out and then come back, restart our feet, and put that ball in that open scene right behind the cornerback and before the safety can get there. Now, here's the thing about Tyler ba- Tyson Badgett that – I don't know if people really know this. He holds the record for all quarterbacks in college of throwing 153 touchdown passes. He is the Heisman Trophy winner in Division II football. So this guy can play football. He is not he's, – he's one of the few guys undrafted Division II who has made a 53-man roster – And possibly looks like right now he's going to make it all the way through unless he gets injured. Mm -hmm. He would have been the only Division II quarterback to have ever made an undrafted quarterback who would have ever made a 53-man roster. Now, what does this tell you about this kid? This kid has what they call – I don't know if you remember this word, Greg. It might be since you're the the young end of the family. (laughs) Um, It was a thing called moxie. Oh, he's got a lot of moxie. And I'm going to tell you where that moxie comes from. Got a lot of gumption. Do you know Do you know who his father is? No. Who is his dad? His father is Travis. Badgett. Badgett. Do you know anybody? He's He, he is one of the world cha- reigning world champion for almost two decades in a sport that um, I don't even know if people really call it a sport because very seldom does it make it to ESPN. But he is a world, 17-time world champion arm wrestler. You know, um, uh, oddly enough, you keep hearing things about him arm wrestling um, because he is, he beat somebody who was, it was some, it was a a sports reporter, somebody that he arm wrestled. So he is a bona fide Class A arm wrestler. World champion with both arms. He's beat all the left-handers, and he's beat all the right-handers. Wow. And he is um, – they all live in Shepherdstown. And that's how uh, Tyson ended up at Shepherd's uh, College because his dad was a, a star pitcher there and baseball player there. Um, his dad also owns a CrossFit. And so hmm. – Tyson has been trained since he was a young guy. Push, you know, those CrossFit athletes are no joke. I mean, these guys do True. a million push-ups, carry barbells up and down. I'll tell you about that today, too. My my elevator broke down yesterday, and I had to do an event earlier today. And uh, can you see me at 4 o'clock in the morning trying to keep it quiet, and I'm hauling speakers up a, down a steep flight, Two story. Look, I was like, oh, 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 it was it was that noise that was going <laughs> for six flights today. Six <laughs> flights of stairs. All right, but I, I was laying in a heap okay. on the bottom. But anyway, get back out of it. So look, okay, let's let's get back. Let's let's get back to talking football right now. All right. So Badgett, well, you saw him last week, right? This was a guy who had no reps. Only reps he got was off of watching Justin Fields, mm-hmm. off of watching film, and you saw him execute an offense better than Justin Fields could. You saw him throwing footballs in areas that we have not seen Justin Fields throw the ball. Why is he capable of doing this? Because he's one of the most prolific quarterbacks in Division II football ever, right? So he understands when people are open. He, he understands when people are open. So the issue is now, I think, because of Justin Fields playing in a offense in college 
where people just had superior speed, had that great offensive line, that he was throwing into wide open windows. And now those windows for him close too early. Mm-hmm. And when he should be throwing the ball, he's thinking about it, and you see, you just don't see the ball come out. It's not that he can't play quarterback. It's just not registering to him that I need to get the ball out right now. You saw Badgett come in and complete balls off into the flats that looked like they should have been picked off, but he knows by throwing the ball in, putting it into that location where he's at, he's throwing the ball, that ball is not going to get picked off. Now, one thing about him, he does not have tremendous arm talent. I don't see him where he's really just cranking the ball up. But what he does do, he's a lot like Johnny Manziel. He throws the ball into into an area where his guy can go get it. One thing about him, he's more disciplined than, than Manziel. I think what you're going to see with Badger now, Badger needs a lot of work, a lot of work on his on his uh, his. Uh, I don't know who his quarterback coach was, but he needs some help with um, backpedaling, getting where he needs to go to, and, and, and hitch and gather instead of a hitch and rebalancing. But the thing that you're going to see, I think, from the Bears today is I think you're going to see them move the pocket a little bit with him and give him these quick throws, but I think you're going to see some sluggo routes. I think you're going to see them try to drop the ball into that area right between, especially if he sees too high safety. I think you're going to see him trying to drop that ball on the outside right past that cornerback because I believe they're going to try to jump these little short routes that he's been throwing. He threw a lot of those run they're called run solution, but RPOs, as people understand them. Now, is this a winnable solution for the Bears? Yes, it is, if they can get the line coverage right. And I think a lot of that had to do with white hair. I think he was throwing bad snaps all over Northern America. Not only was he throwing them bad to Justin Fields, but he still was throwing them on the ground, um, off the side, everywhere else, that Badgett had to take his eyes off where he needed to go to catch the football. That messes up these mesh-type plays because now the quarterback has to go retrieve the ball, come back, try to mesh it, try to pick up his read again. Because in practice, ball's coming straight back to you like it's supposed to. But you get into the game, it's all over Northern America. That messes up these type of offenses. So you see the Bears trying to run an offense that's on time, right? But you cannot have a ball that's all over the place and run an offense on time. So what I'm hoping to see a lot with the Bear is that we try to establish the run early. But I just don't think with um, Borum, I just either two things are going wrong up front. Either with White here not setting the protection correctly. where Because I saw a couple of times White here and the right guard were taking the one technique and they let the three technique just come free. And you saw escapability from Badgett where he could slide and get away from people. People, look, this guy is physically tough, and he's smart, and he's strong. So I think he's a guy who also understands he's not the swiftest guy in Northern America either. So I think it's a guy who has good feet, who has good escapability, and understands when he sees people and they're open or not. Question is, because he does not have a rocket, is that I'm wondering will cornerbacks bait a throw that they can get to? Um, I'm curious about that because I don't know if we've really seen too many. Um, I mean, he has you know he has a decent arm, but normally in the NFL, what we see now we see everybody with a hand cannon. I mean, I, I can't think of a starting quarterback in the NFL right now that uh, doesn't really have a rocket. Maybe uh, was that Wilson? Maybe he didn't have a real hand cannon. Um, but uh, these guys are few and far between. You got to be able to fit the ball. But what thing Badger does do is that he anticipate what's going to happen. And he reads and understands defenses. He knows where the ball is supposed to go. Question is now, as a NFL quarterback and not a Division II Heisman, there's some one weird name they got for the Heisman. I don't know exactly what that is. But will that translate into the NFL? I say it will. I say it will. I say the biggest problem the Bears have is the same problem they had with Justin Field. You have – your left tackle situation is horrible. It is really, really bad. The more film I watch these last few days, the more disgusted I got. I mean, Borum is bad. I mean, bad on run. He gets beat across his face on the run. Um, he just he must he must grade really well for whatever they're trying to do, 
But the plays that he misses, unless it's just the line calls that are getting missed and maybe why here everybody's not on the same page. Because I saw backs going one way little they were going to pick up a, a end. You had three people going to a defensive end and, and, the, and the three technique was left. So it's all these different types of things that look like an offense that didn't know what they were doing. And I thought this was the NFL. I thought people get paid to know what they're doing. I'm not, I don't understand how – I really don't understand how you not have blocking assignments down correctly. I mean, it would seem to me that there would be some personal pride with this offensive line mm-hmm. that somehow we would be staying after practice. Somehow we would be on a Zoom call. Somehow somebody needs to lead that group up there and go, you know what, we're not going to miss assignments. We're just not. We might get beat physically, but everybody's going to get a hat on a hat. I mean, it just it, – and, and here's what Eberflu said, which was really interesting to me. When he said, "You know um, about Justin Fields," he says, "You know, uh, well, we don't, we don't, we don't teach the blocking situation like that." Mm-hmm. So, okay, so why are they blocking it like that then? Who's teaching it? Mm-hmm. Who, who, who's, who's putting, who's putting that running back on that defensive end? Now, weekly, Coach Eberflu has a show on uh, W on ESPN One Thousand. WMVP and uh, a lot of questions came out of when he was responding to why were the blocking schemes the way they were what was happening and Jay there is a question I wanted to ask you and it was a question that was talked about in the chat and one of those questions would be is there something from what you've seen in your film study is there something you see and again we're Assuming we can't say for sure, mm-hmm. but something looks wrong with Cody White here. No, something is wrong with Cody White here. Let's let's put that out there. You are an NFL offensive lineman. This is what you do. Mm-hmm. You've been asked to snap the football. Nobody I've ever seen grabs the ball on the top like they're getting ready to eat a Chicago style hot dog, right? Like like they're about to shut they got they're gonna do a full gullet, just do a full body slam with it. Nobody does this like this. Number two, when you watch yourself on film and you're throwing the ball all over Northern America, don't you think maybe I need to work at this a little bit? This is the arrogance of a team that has been lost by their coaching staff. See, when you know that you're still going to play and you're still going to do it your way, I'm going to keep doing it my way. Hey, look, he's, he's probably trying to snap the ball like that so that he can get his hand back. We see a lot of centers talk about that all the time. They, they, they throw the ball back hard because they're trying to get their hand back, right? So, But he's throwing the ball and he's not consistent with putting the ball in the same Location, that means that his hand is not slapping himself in the same – it's in between your thighs when you throw the ball. Your hand should slap in the same area when you throw the ball back. He is just chucking it back there, up, down, all over the place. And he believes, because this contract he signed, maybe he's on his last hurrah. I don't know what it is. But he's so needed on this bad offensive line, you're not going to sit him down, so I'm not changing anything. I'm wondering – did his offensive line coach ever go, hey, Cody, you know, you've been chucking them all over Northern America back there. You know, I'm, I'm about to put a catcher's mitt on my man back there because he had to go down and, <laughs> he has to go down and block the plate. You're throwing knuckleballs back there. Can you give this guy, can you give these kids a chance? It's not like it's Tom Brady like that. And I'm going to tell you what. That was Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Any of these guys like that, you think he would be snapping that football back there like that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because they would ride him into the ground. You know where they would ride him? Out the door. Mm-hmm. They would They would have the power to say, I don't want that guy give me somebody in here who can snap the football back to me. It's Justin too nice. Is he too good of a kid the problem, to be arrogant enough to be the butthole he needs to be? Okay, let, 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 let me let – me, let me compare the two. Okay. Let me compare Tyson Badgett to Justin Fields, all right? All right. Justin Fields is that guy who's worked extremely hard, but he's been extremely successful. You know, he could have went uh, Major League Baseball. 
I mean, he's been that guy. Not saying he doesn't deserve everything he's gotten, because I know he's worked extremely hard, but he's been extremely gifted. Speed, everything that you want. I mean, athlete. I mean, he's a great looking athlete. He and, is a tremendous looking athlete. And, and can throw the football. I mean, you know, arm, everything. I mean, he has everything, right? You look at a kid like Bajit who comes out of a situation where he's underdog. You know, he's had to work himself to get to the position. So everything that he does has to be um, perfect for him, for him to su- succeed. And he's a guy who didn't even look like he didn't. He was going to go, I think, to the University of Maryland. He decided to stay at But he's a guy who didn't get one D1 offer coming out of high school. So you look at a guy who's worked himself into he's just happy to be on a NFL roster, and now it's going to be starting a football game. This is everything to him, and it to, it's the mindset. I think when you believe that you're going to get there, you know you're going to get there, it's not the drive as, as, as important. The winning is not as important. Because right now, Justin Fields should have been lighting up that offensive line. They, they should have talked about he was running around chasing people, you know, whatever he was doing now. He's going to get big body slammed, but he should be all up in their faces. So Justin was really supposed to be riding around Hallis Hall on the golf cart. Yeah. Just swinging um, just objects. Like, kind of like Squire Butler. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. oh look, look. It's, Off with their head. He should have been, he should have been running around with a sickle. You know? <laughs> I mean, literally chasing people through the through the parking lot. Somebody come get Justin. He's chasing Cody White here again, <laughs> trying to run him over. You know, playing car, playing playing. Uh, uh, yeah, he's just too nice. And I think the reason why he's just too nice because he, I think he was just hardwired that way. I think he was trained that way. Um, because I think he thought that it was just going to come. Now I won't say easy, but simply. Well, he did say that originally. Remember when he first came in, his first preseason when he was a rookie, he was like, it's easy. It's not that hard. Yeah, so we saw flashes. But here's the thing mm-hmm. about the NFL. Guess what? Everybody, Everybody's past scholarship, everybody's paid. Mm-hmm. Everybody's been getting the, in, in, getting the nil money for as long as they've been in the league. So guess what they're going to do? They're not going to let you do what you're good at. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to get better at something else. And that's the one thing Justin Fields has not done is not got better at something else. You know, you saw Badger throw a, a, sl- a deep slant. We haven't seen that yet right? out of Justin Fields. I mean, I'm not – look, when they, everybody said that, I'm like, oh, and then I went and looked at it and said, no, we didn't see – we ain't seen that ball. You know, now – Now, explain something to – and I know there are listeners who are trying to figure it out and people who are listening. What is a sluggo? Because you hear people talk about it, and I know there are listeners who are saying, I don't know what some of these terms are. So what? Because it's been talked about a lot this week. Justin throwing the sluggo, Badgett throwing the sluggo. So what is the sluggo? All right, first, well, what it, what it, what is? It's an acronym for slant and go. So you set the you set it up by throwing slant routes. Slant routes are routes that break right off the line. If you go two yards, drive two steps, and you go hard breaking to the inside. And you're just putting your body in front of the defender, and they put the ball down low, and you're 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 basically catching the ball like that. That's a slant, right? So once you do this a number of times, and people see you making that same movement, that same movement with your shoulders, people want to jump that sluggo, want to jump that slant route, which means they see the movement, they want to go and cut you off at the intersecting point of the flight of the football. So they're trying to beat you to the football. So what happens now is that with a sluggo, you slant, looks like you're going to slant, and on that second step, instead of driving with your third step, you take that step and you bounce it back outside. And so now the defender has committed to jumping the route, and now it locks his feet in the ground, and you run past him to his backside, where he literally has to flip around and lose sight of you to chase you. And now in – NFL terms, if you even, you should be leaving, and you will stack that route. And so what happens is when you're stacking somebody is that now I'm going to run as the offensive player and get in front of the defender. So now the defender doesn't have an angle to the football. He has to either come through me to get to the ball 
or I can cut left or cut right and he has to follow me instead of anticipating where I'm going to go. Most um, defensive backs are taught to ride in the hip pocket of the offensive player to get right on that back hip pocket. So now you're cutting off the movement to the inside and then you can still work through him to get to the ball to the outside and you're in between him and the flight of the football. So a sluggo is a slant and go. I want to slant hard to the inside and then I'm going to shift and either with my right foot, or, uh, my open field foot, I'm going to take off and head to the numbers and hopefully I left that guy behind. But that only works if you have been throwing that slant route successfully. And so what I'm expecting to see from the Bears today, again, is more of these quick release passes. The problem that I think was going to happen. Okay, let me go back a couple plays. You remember the, the fumble for a, a touchdown with Bajan, right? I do. Now, in no way, shape, or form is that his fault. No way, shape, or form is that his fault. We'll explain it because Lewis Reddick and many other pundits have said that was just a terrible – well, his pass – that was intercepted was terrible, but the fumble was bad too. But explain to the listeners why was that not his fault? First thing, what Lewis Riddick and all of them failed to acknowledge was that uh, number 97 was a free runner from the three technique. From the three technique. Anybody knows what the three technique, that's the guy that's over the top of the guard. Mm -hmm. He was actually in a real three technique tight he wasn't in in that in that other gap he was in the b gap literally he was in the b i mean just shade into the a gap right so that means that's a gap between the center and the guard the left guard the left guard and left tackle because there was a a a tackle to the outside and there was another defensive end they both fan block they both went outside to the left right the Three technique then was left alone. Cody White here and the right tackle go and block the guy that's in front of Cody White here in between them. That's in the one technique. So it left the three technique as a free runner. All right. Badgett escapes that. He fends to the right, steps back left, and the guy misses him. He steps up, and I forgot who he has um, open, wide open. He's going to throw the football. But guess who fall down and go boom on the backside? Would that happen to be your favorite left tackle? Bore Mr. Turnstile himself laid out. I mean, he he actually, I think he had those, uh, you know those wands mm -hmm. when you're waving the 747s yes. into the parking spot? I literally think he pulled that out and would just start waving it. <laughs> Please come in here. Come in here, enter and he, here, and he waved him on like 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 what's that? The speed check at the at the uh, at the airport where you don't have to wait in line. He literally waved him on and gave him a bag of nuts as he was heading over there, and he fell down and go boom. All right, so now you have the young fella escape the three technique, right? Blind uh, just missed him, which I don't understand how the three technique missed him. He steps up now in the throwing motion because. Does he think that his left tackle has just olayed back there? Look, we need to call him Sir uh, Larry Bourne. You know, Senor Larry Bourne, we need to call him that. El, el, <laughs> el let go. Yeah. We, I am El let go. Yeah, I we let got, go everyone. I let go everyone. Everyone come visit. Everyone come visit him. Look, so on those two things alone, he goes a step up, and so that um, – Free runner off the backside who beat Larry Borum because he decided to fall trip over the, the hash mark. And so the kid goes to step up to throw to a wide open wide receiver. He's in the throwing motion, get ready to throw, and he goes to get stripped from behind him. That is not his fault. I don't care what Lewis Riddick, I don't care what they're saying. To me, it sounds like some hater raid, some Justin Field love, because that kid was making the right play. He made a great play. And he's getting ready to put the ball, and that's going to be a 20-yard uh, a play on right there. It was the right play. Anybody else, it could have been Tom Brady back there. Anybody else, and he was sliding up. And I'll tell you what he does better than Justin Fields, though. He does climb the pocket better than Justin Fields. I have not seen Justin Fields climb the pocket like this. This kid climbs back up in the pocket to get rid of the football. So um, those guys, I don't think I – I didn't see any of those people calling out that offensive line. 
for that. They're always throwing, holding the ball too long. What, what was he supposed to do with that ball right there? Just eat it, fall down? I don't know what he was supposed to do because really when you talk about that line, you're talking about now Tevin Jenkins moving back to the right side because of Nate Davis being injured. It's a lot. It's a lot of moving parts. I'd rather rather see Tevin Jenkins back at left tackle. I'd just rather see him over there. He's going to get hurt if he's over there, but at least he's going to give an effort. Hmm. That is a not. Run blocking is bad. Pass blocking is atrocious. I mean, it's just I don't understand. I don't understand the feet situation unless he's just getting bamboozled up there, thinking he's going to go one way. And, you know, sometimes that happens. I mean, I didn't have the greatest feet at playing left tackle either. So, I'm, just, you know, but it's got to get better than that. I mean, it's just got to get better than that. You just can't get Olaid on a regular. We can't get Olaid on run plays. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't understand you getting Olaid on run plays. You know where you're going. Mm-hmm. If that guy comes and crosses your face, you're going to take him and drive him. Right. If he goes behind you, if he goes behind you, either you're going to go up to the next level, or you're going to come back and cut him off. So, so you cut him off a run, or if the ball is moving away from you, you don't care about the last guy on the end line of scrimmage. You're going to go up to the second level. That's what you do. That's what you're taught. You're taught like that since high school. I just don't understand this situation right here where we can't stay up on our feet. At least, at least if you're getting mauled, getting mauled. On your feet, I rather I rather him get mauled and lay on his back because he got ran over and get just stepped over. Yeah, short. I mean, it's the shortest route to the quarterback, mm-hmm. and I think that's what. You, and I I believe some of this is the problem with Justin Fields, but the issue is with Justin Fields is that I don't think he's recognizing what he's seeing, and if you're not recognizing what you're seeing because you haven't seen it enough. Because you haven't How many seen more it times since he needs to see somebody Here, sitting in his face. Well, but what this is what I'm saying though. What I'm saying is I think they're showing him something at the beginning that he thinks that's what's going to happen, and then when the movement starts to happen. You don't see. Okay, you you said this the other day, which was uh, how many times? Uh, why don't the bull the bulls, Lord Jesus? Why don't the bears put somebody in motion on a regular basis? At some point. I mean, you put somebody in motion on a regular basis so that you could tell, are they in man yes. coverage or man are they in zone? They in zone. So here's a clear indicator. Right. And so, even if it's not clear, you, you got a better idea. Right. They can fake it. If somebody doesn't mm-hmm. somebody if, if you're in zone, they're not going to track that all the way across. If he goes right. all the way across, they're going to pass it off. Mm-hmm. Right. That guy's not going to run all the way across and be out of his zone over here. That's right. not going to happen. But so why are we not see why are we not seeing this motion? You know why? Because the offense isn't designed that way. The offense is designed the way it is because we want to take advantage of these flat players. Are they bailing on the technique or are they sitting up tight on the technique where we can work to the outside? Here's a problem that um, when we have these stick routes, and these stick routes are these routes that you're sitting right out right at the hash. You're driving up and you're coming back. You're driving up and you're cutting in. And then sometimes we'll have a wide receiver on the outside who has an outside release, and he's flashing down the field to make that corner who's running with him have to run with him, right? Mm -hmm. If the corner sits down, we're going to throw the ball over the top of that corner's head and in front of the safety. We see that's an NFL throw. We see it all the time. The problem is with the Bears, they cannot recognize that look up there. Are they coming or are they not coming? And if they're not coming – Right, we need to get a ball off. We need to hand the football off. How many times will we see the Bears when they th- when they show these passes that get deflected and all type of stuff? If they were just handing the ball off, they they had a they had a really good running play there. There you go. And so I'm I'm under the thorough belief that the Bears need to commit to the run. Right, they need to take they need to let's bring the tight end down in there. Right, let's bring a fullback down. You have one on the. You are one of the few teams in the NFL that has a fullback on the roster. Here, here's here's the key to anything, right? What do what do great boxers do when they have an opponent that's equal to them? They switch it up. Yes. You no, know, they, they they start going southpaw, all right? Or they, or they start leading with the backhand, or all of a sudden they give them something that they haven't seen before, or they work a different angle, right? So why not why not come put this fullback in the eye? Mm-hmm. Why not put him in? I wasn't the last time you seen a team play I football, where you're going to come out and let, let's come out and let, let's hit somebody. Let's get two, three yards, two, three yards. What does it give you? It gives you a doable third and four, third and three, 
right? But I'm telling you the reason what's happening is that these huge collisions that are happening right now, the Bears are scared for the running backs. Hmm. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up with Tyson. It's Badgett time. What do we believe is going to happen as far as Tyson Badgett and the, what the Bears are going to do against the Las Vegas Raiders? I think he's going to look better against – I think he's going to look better than what he looked with no um, time at all playing quarterback. I think this is a kid's a gamer, which I believe he's going to be able to see stuff that's open for him. And I think he's going to put the ball in. I think he's going to see a better version of this. I think he's going to make some throws Justin Fields can't make. The only thing I'm concerned with this kid, his throwing motion is not the greatest, but it's consistent. Mm -hmm. But 153 touchdowns, I don't care if that's in Nerf football. I don't care if that's a Nerf football where you shoot it with the gun and the thing flies out. 153 touchdowns is 153 touchdowns. That means the kid can't throw the football. He knows how to find the end zone. Oh, guess what you did see? You saw the sneak work really well. You saw him sneaking and he didn't come up limping. You know? So this is a kid. One thing about him, he's in shape, shape, shape. And I mean, that's just, you know, muscle shape. He's in bending shape, everything else, because those CrossFit people are ridiculously in shape. And the other thing that's in shape is his mind because his dad is a hard driver um, and he makes this kid work hard. And he's got another – I want to say he has a younger brother that's coming up with the same type of mindset. And, 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 and sometimes athletes are born and sometimes athletes are made. And I'll take that athlete that's made because he had to make all the right steps. He shouldn't – he should not be a Chicago Bear. But that kid is going to come up and start up with a whole week of practice. And guess what? Did you see it? Did you see it on that touchdown? That first touchdown he had, that touchdown drive. That was a team that was happy to see a quarterback who actually can throw the football. So, very interesting. We'll see what happens. Listen, you know you're listening to the sizzle. It is the hottest talk in the two one nine. It's the hottest talk in the region. And right now, you know what we're getting ready to do. We're going to give you some sweetest day love because we're going to give you the J Sizzle mix. Right here on WGVE.